completely different topic now. So <laughs> telling you the advantage of uh, double row cuff repair to moving to implantless trans transosseous uh, cuff repair. So uh, we've got funding from the government for actually, you know, development and uh, testing of this uh, instrumentation. This is a reusable instrumentation we use for transosseous cuff repairs. Uh, we do not use any uh, anchors <coughs> for this particular technique. This um, originated because, you know, we found that, you know, double row transosseous equivalent vented anchors, suture bridge technique. And so, you know, we had so many techniques evolving. But then we went back to actually, you know, the basics where, you know, transosseous is still the gold standard against which, you know, everything is compared against. And so we developed this arthroscopic transosseous rotator cuff repair system, which is actually a reusable autoclavable system. Uh, and uh, where it would have a significant social economic impact if it comes into much more commercial use. And we know the advantages of vented anchors where it increases biology, where if you have a tunnel, it obviously increases the biology. And so how did we go about it? We looked up the existing products and very briefly, I'll tell you, we did all cadaver testing, mechanical analysis, and also there is a screw lock mechanism, which we had actually patented it. And the advantage obviously is a better biology. Revision becomes less challenging and we can show from our MRI scans later on in a year that it completely heals, it fills up with bone. <clears throat> so, and this is something, nothing new. This has been practiced, you know, world over and there are multiple systems, but there is nothing available commercially in India. So, but we know from literature that transosseous cuff repair, it has equivalent structural integrity, clinical outcome as those of any uh, you know, anchor-based repair. So the other techniques that were uh, that are available in other countries are the Altafit, Arthrotunneler, Tensor or Skurda technique, everything. So the prototypes initially we went through a lot of, you know, huge prototypes, different designs, and then we actually wanted a good design that actually preserves maximum bone and also ensures that you don't have a cutout. <clears throat> so the instrumentation is pretty simple. It can be just kept in the back table, and then it can be autoclaved. So where the, the key thing here is the screw lock mechanism. You can see that there's a screw that actually comes through, which can be loaded onto the uh, you know, insertion device and that locks onto the jig, and then it actually shuttles the sutures. Basically, it's as simple as you get a vertical tunnel arthroscopically, and then you insert the jig laterally through a low lateral portal, and then you actually then drill through the lateral aspect, hit the tip of the jig, and then you actually pass the loading mechanism with the screw along with the shuttle. And then this is how it actually locks onto the tip. And then you actually use a shuttle or you can actually load the fiber wire directly. And then you take it out, you have a horizontal and a vertical tunnel, and then you've got you know, a bone bridge. <clears throat> so this is the technique in brief. Uh, this is the video technique. We have published in arthroscopic techniques uh, as well. You can have a look at it. So basically standard you know, assessment of the cuff. I do all my cuffs in lateral position. The, here you can see that the vertical tunnel is being made, the pilot hole. This is as much, much as standard as any medial row anchor that you'd use. And the size is also four mm. So it is actually you know, equivalent to that of an anchor. Only that you will actually see, that, see the hole and uh, sometimes you will feel uh, worried, but actually it is the same diameter. Then you pass it through a low lateral portal, then you pass the you know, device and it actually snugs, snugly fits into it. And then through the low lateral portal, you actually drill through the pre-marked mark. And once you go through that, you actually hit the tip of the guide. This is the arthroscopic uh, sh video showing that. And then you pass the insertion uh, along with the insertion device along with the small screw that actually has got the suture. And then you actually shuttle it through <coughs> And what you can see in the arthroscopy video is that the device is actually just pulled out and you can see that the thread is being locked onto the tip of the screw that is through. So now you've got a vertical and a horizontal tunnel and then you've got the suture shuttling through and then now you can pass how many over fiber wire. We can actually you know, get in even up to three and you've got six sutures that can be passed through the cuff. So and after this, it's pretty much standard. You actually then just, the suture management is a bit tricky because there are two important key criteria, you know, steps that are different to that of a standard cuff repair, where suture management is very important because you need to know which ones are coming from the top, which ones are coming from the side, and you need to dissect out the lateral deltoid bursa so that you can actually see the lateral entry point. 
And the other thing is that your tunnels must be spaced out, but you can make up to a maximum of three, but ideal is two, because otherwise you can have a blowout. <coughs> so I'll be on about uh, the 30 seconds more. And then the sutures are tied in a standard fashion. The advantage of the system is that you can actually create a H pattern, X pattern, or any number of uh, suture pattern can configuration is, uh, uh, you know, it can be done, and it provides a robust, you know, repair. And you can see that, you know, it is solidly repaired, and you can actually see the sutures are just uh, going all across the cuff tissue. So it is already published, and as I said, you know, the question we always get is that the, whether the bone will give way, but, you know, there are CT-based studies which actually show that the bone quality when you go, as you go down, is much better, and so the jig is designed so that it actually captures up to about 20 mm, you know, vertically, so the bone bridge is quite good. And, uh, you know, this is just one example patient of an MRI done, you know, one year. You can actually see only just the, the tip of the, you know, horizontal tunnel that has actually be done and everything else is filled with bone. So we do have plans to actually, you know, train more people and, uh, uh, you know, it's been a slow progress over the last six years, but it has been still some progress. Thank you.